Welcome back to Jurassic Evergreen Park. In this episode I will build a lagoon with the new kelp and new light decoration to introduce the wonderful megalodon from the latest DLC to my park. And with that said, hey guys, Lejun here and welcome back to new speed build in Jurassic Evergreen Park. And today we will be finally introducing the first DLC creature, the Megalodon, to this wonderful park. The DLC has now been out for quite a while, but I just didn't uh, get to get the time to build something for this park and to do a YouTube episode right here. So this is the first time I'm ever featuring this DLC on my YouTube channel. Since this park is pretty close to actually being finished, I'm not sure if I will be able to introduce all of the new species to this park still before finishing it, but I will try to do my best to introduce some of them still to this park and also do speed builds for most of them. So make sure to subscribe to my channel for more awesome park builds. The reason that I chose the Megalodon as the first species of the DLC to actually build for something in this park is because I thought I actually thought to add a lagoon right here where I'm adding this lagoon now, but I wanted to actually do a different build before that and that is like a Brachiosaurus build and also a different habitat uh, sort of in front of that next to the plaza from the last episode. Also check that episode out if you haven't seen it yet and yeah I just basically skipped that build sort of and now decided to go straight to the Megalodon Lagoon and I had a lot of fun building this because especially we got some uh, awesome new lagoon content with the kelp. Yeah, but speaking of the kelp, uh, we didn't just get the DLC this time because this time we actually got a free update. It wasn't a big free update with many new features or many quality of life changes like we used to get enough free updates, but we get basically just got two new really highly anticipated features. One of them is of course the kelp decoration for the lagoon, which I will talk about later, which I think is a really good addition. And then also the new light uh, that was uh, before able to be placed in the lagoon and now you can also place that light outside of the lagoon and you know get a whole new way to light up your parks. But before I get to talking about the DLC and especially the Megalodon, I'm gonna explain uh, this build right here and we're actually just going from the plaza, uh, from the you know sort of designed concept art plaza uh, from the last episode and just going from there then sort of into a semi-circle design which in the future there will be a habitat right there and then next to that we have the lagoon the actual lagoon for the megalodon with some shops in the front and then you can go off uh, to a separate path and sort of go into a separate area for the you know whole lagoon where we have a megalodon jaw um, sort of path art design which i thought uh, was a really cool idea i saw evo do a singular two as a path art design in her megalodon build so i thought it would be a cool idea to you know just do the whole megalodon jaw which is just a really iconic picture and really iconic fossil and it's also the cover of the latest dlc and then on the other side of the lagoon i just place some of the you know usual viewing galleries for the lagoon inside of the lagoon there are like two viewing domes and then on one of the edges of the lagoon i also uh, use the you know, lagoon glitch where you can glitch different building items and decorations into the lagoon to make a natural looking lagoon edge and I think it looks really really good, especially in combination with the kelp. But yeah, I remember of course uh, the teaser for this pack where we basically got the picture of the Megalodon, Megalodon jaw to tease this DLC and they told us something big is coming to the game and they were for sure right and uh, most people expected uh, a completely different pack than what we actually got I think because uh, we have never really gotten before like a a mixed pack that didn't really have uh, where like not all of the species in this pack basically have something in common uh, the really most of mixed packs we've probably had before where the packs uh, like the late Cretaceous and the early Cretaceous pack which are in my opinion quite similar to this with one flying creature uh, one land creature and then also uh, one flying creature one lagoon creature and then two land creatures is what I mean and uh, many people suggest, uh, suspected that we were going to get a Mesozoic, uh, a Cenozoic DLC, I mean, and I personally wasn't really with that uh, idea. I thought we we're gonna get like a prehistoric giants DLC, but we ended up getting is the Park Manager's Collection Pack, which is pretty much just a fan favorites DLC. And I feel like in general, this whole DLC was probably the last DLC of this game because all of the species we got were really highly requested species, like the Megalodon, which many people wanted after after the first lagoon uh, DLC, the marine species pack, and then also we have the Sagisaurus, which is probably, I think, like the last uh, actual sort of canon dinosaur. It was like on the brochure of the Jurassic, uh, on the Jurassic Park jo brochure in the first movie, and it was also in the books, I'm pretty sure. 
And then we get the Microceratus, which is the last uh, dinosaur actually remaining from the Jurassic World movies. It was in Dominion and people were really, you know, confused why it wasn't in the Malta DLC. And yeah, it was basically missing from the game for a long time now and we finally have it. Then we also last have the Thanatos Dracon, which many people feel like is an odd addition, but I personally just know what front you want to do with this, and it's basically supposed to be a stand-in for what everyone wanted, and that's the Hatsigopteryx. Because the Hatsigopteryx was highly requested um, a short time after the Quetz actually came into the game, because the Quetz is pretty oversized, and just having a, a second huge and star kit in the game would be really cool, and I think the Thanatos Dracon really delivered on just another great and star kit in the game. My personal favorite uh, creature of the DLC is for sure the Thanatos Dracon, I would say, but it's closely followed by actually the Megalodon. I, uh, in the beginning I wasn't too excited for the Megalodon and also the whole DLC in general, mainly because I think the species are really good, but none of them are like super, like, w super hyped for me. Um, and But I really like the pack, actually. I really like the Thanatos Dracon a lot. I also really like the Megalodon, I think, just paired with the kelp we got in the update, it works really, really well and just creates an awesome vibe in the lagoon. And I actually just spent, like, you know, a long time just looking at the lagoon right here. I just built after it was finished uh, because I just think the vibe is so awesome and the uh, mech looks great, you know, swimming through the lagoon. And then we also had the Sagittarius and Microceratus, and I just think. Yeah, getting two small species is just kind of, uh, you know, weird and especially if we only get two land species, both of them being like tiny and the Sagisaurus I wasn't really excited for at all. I thought it was gonna be just like the Silophysis, but I actually think it's quite nice because it has uh, some nice skins and then also it's smaller than the Silophysis. It's a little bit bigger than the Compi, so that means we can actually build habitats better for it than for the Silophysis in my opinion because instead of using the fence which would be too tall uh, we can use the mortar walls and if you use the mortar walls for the Silophysis it doesn't really work that well but it works uh, pretty well for the little Sagisaurus in my opinion. But let's get back to talking about the speed build because right now in the speed build you can see how I am uh, finishing the rest of decorating the lagoon and of course I had to use a ton of the new kelp decoration and this is probably one of the best uh, features we've gotten in a long time. I mean we also got uh, benches and bins not too long ago which also was a really great update I'm sort of debating which one you know is a better feature and a better decoration but honestly the kelp is just really really great because it's exactly what the lagoon needed which is why we were requesting it so much in this community and I just have to say that the wait was worth it and all the requesting it was also worth it because the kelp adds a whole you know new verticality to the lagoon and just makes it so much better you can sort of divide your lagoon uh, you know divide up a uh, little spaces in your lagoon and then have the different creatures uh, swim through the kelp you can also just you know have break up the whole uh, empty space in the lagoon because before the lagoons were just big empty spaces and you could only use uh, the couple of decorations we had to decorate the bottom of the lagoons and I just think that that didn't work out well and it didn't really change much about the lagoon but right now here I'm mixing up the kelp as well as uh, in the areas where I don't use the kelp I sort of place down a lot of those sunken ships and sunken cages and stuff like that I also place down one of the indominus skeletons and then I later went in to place all of those you know sort of volcano uh, decoration things and I think that also makes a really cool look and fits the megalodon you know with all of the sunken ships and the volcanoes uh, down there just makes the megalodon feel even more menacing. And in this build I used uh, quite a lot of uh, you know things and different attractions and also different tricks to make the lagoon more special. And uh, not only did I have the megalodon in here but also the archelon because I don't have it in the park yet and it's just great because you can then also use the lagoon walk which adds another dimension you know sort of to the lagoon with also the creatures being able to go outside of the lagoon and sort of be above water and the rocks also look really cool from above and that's one thing I also uh, think is uh, one of the best things about the kelp and that is that from above when you look at the lagoons uh, whilst flying through your park uh, which is the kind of way that you experience your park most of the time and which is why decorating the lagoons before just didn't really feel worth it but now when you look at the lagoons instead of just looking like a big empty space of water you can actually see the kelp in there and just makes the lagoons feel more alive and sort of lush and just gives them more interest but yeah as i already said in uh, one of the corners i sort of did a lagoon glitch where you glitch different items into the lagoon. If you don't know how that works, you basically build your lagoon shape, you remove one of the lagoons and then on the edge 
uh, and you before you it's also good to mark the area with uh, some kind of the rain brush uh, where the lagoon was previously and then you can play some decorations on the edge raise the terrain and then you can re-add the lagoon and it will basically glitch into the lagoon and it also looks really cool and those natural edges combined with the kelp makes the lagoon just uh, really blend into the forest that is next to the lagoon and it looks really good i feel like and then I also, of course, place down the viewing galleries, place down the viewing domes, which are also a um, you know more new feature to the lagoons uh, coming with the marine update. And then um, I again place down this uh, sort of megalodon uh, jaw path art, which you're probably gonna see later in the speed build. And then I also uh, decided to place one of the shark feeders. I actually have feeding turned off in this park, sadly, because of the Demetrodon habitat. I just kind of forgot to put the feeder in there, uh, but it's fine. And also uh, the feeding of the dinosaurs also messes sort of with the performance, which I can't really afford in this park anymore because the performance is already quite bad, uh, but we're close to finishing it anyway, so it's fine. And uh, yeah, then I placed one of the viewing towers, just uh, the regular viewing towers for the habitats next to that uh, shark feeding area. And that also looks really nice. I also placed one in front of a uh, rock for the Archelon where they lie on. And I also think just creating different viewing opportunities in a lagoon like that, not just the regular lagoon viewing galleries, looks really nice. Because uh, I rarely even use these towers in uh, regular exhibits anymore. I have, I think like uh, one or two of them, I think like two of them in this park in general uh, as a whole, like this park is close to being done and I only have two of them actually f uh, as viewing for habitats in this park. And so yeah, I think a really good use case for them is when you have the lagoon and you sink down uh, the terrain neck on one side of them and then you place it next to the shark feeder and it sort of creates like a cool viewing for that shark feeder. And then I also feel like that little secluded plaza with the Megalodon path art in front of that uh, uh, feeder, uh, uh, that viewing gallery for the feeder also feels like it's maybe like a little uh, secluded area um, for like Megalodon feeding shows. So at certain times, like in the Jurassic World movie, they would like bring out the shark um, with the shark feeder and then the Megalodon would, uh, you know, like this do this awesome animation you already saw in the beginning of the video and then jump uh, to the shark. But you're also going to see that later again in the cinematics, of course. I just turned on the hunger for the dinosaurs um, for one moment and then I just forwarded the time and waited for the Megalodon to get some feeding animations. But yeah, the last couple of things I sort of want to talk about with this build is first that also we got of course a new light that we can now place above water with a second variation of it. Uh, before we could only place a similar variation of it in the lagoon and I used that uh, against the lagoon wall uh, when I sank, you know, the sort of trick where you sank, sink down the ground next to one of the sides of the lagoon and I just put those lights next to it and I think it illuminates the lagoon in a really, really nice way. And then also I built this, as I said, this uh, path art for a lagoon, uh, for Megalodon Jaw and I think it looks really cool. but. It was quite time consuming, especially with the path tool lagging a lot in uh, this really detailed park and this park is quite laggy as I said. Um, so I hope the effort was worth it and actually looks pretty good. I just think the teeth look a little weird but that was really the best way I could do it um, because rocks uh, just didn't really work uh, because of the hitboxes. But yeah, now we're finished with the build. Uh, in the cinematics right now, you're gonna get some more nice shots of this build. I personally really like how it turned out. I tried to, again, do a nice shape for the lagoon, and I hope this gives you guys some inspiration for um, your own lagoons and your own Megalodon builds. For example, I hope you guys enjoyed this build as much as I did, and I also enjoyed building it, of course. Um, I'm ca of course, uh, this video took a long time to actually come out, but I hope the wait was worth it. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.